rivalry week in high school football. So many teams staring down one last game on the schedule. Many will play their last game tonight. Wins, losses, touchdowns, turnovers. It's all right here. It's all tonight. This is high school game day. I'm Mason Humpner alongside Joe Canzaneri, Zach Lloyd, and Cord Marka. Cord, tell us what we can expect. Russell Wheel is 5-4. They're 3-3 in conference. Um, they are the 5 seed over there in the Central. Um, so this is a big game seeding wise because Lake Hamilton is the 3 seed. Um, so this is an important game for both sides. Um, Russell Wheel, they have a lethal running back duo. Joe, you talked about him. Uh, Marcellus Olsen, Pat, and Ladarius the oh, Prince. Ducks. Ducks. They, are, they are good on the ground. Um, they combine for over 250 yards per game, which is pretty wild. Man. That is. But they are, given this, the fact that they run so heavy, their pass game it lacks a little bit, and they are a very turnover pro team. Because also when you're putting the ball on the ground that much, you're bound to a few times, right? So they, they don't really win the turnover battle too much. Uh, on defense, they allow 41 and a half points per game. Uh, and when they play defense, they uh, stop the blitz. They, or they stop the run. They sell out, they blitz, they stop the run. They make sure that nobody gets through on the ground. Speaking of that, that actually matches up really well against this Lake Hamilton team. Uh, we talked about last week, Hayden Barton for Lake Hamilton is a beast. 122 yards per game, 20 total touchdowns, and 1,100 total yards. He's very good at what he does. But that Russellville team, since they sell out to stop the run, it could be a great matchup there. Uh, along with that, Lake Hamilton is 5-3, 4-2 in conference, and they're coming off a huge win against Shiloh. Um, if you guys do remember, four for Shiloh and one for Lake Hamilton. I, I got to brag. I got to brag about it a little bit because last week they told me I didn't know ball. What happened in that? You told yourself you didn't know ball. Yeah. Um, anywho, uh, <laughs> on the defensive side of the Lake Hamilton team, Hagen Tyler is going to be their leader. Um, he is. He's a great linebacker. He has 12 tackles a game, four total sacks this year, uh, and they only allow 24 points per game. So this is a good defense and a solid running offense um, against a team with a little bit of a lackluster defense. The keys to the game for Lake Hamilton are going to be to run and use that running their advantage and to use the momentum from last week. You know, they're coming off a really big conference win. They need to use that momentum to get a win in this upcoming game because it's huge for their seeding and keeping this three seed. And for this uh, Russellville team, their keys to the game are going to be stop Hayden Martin because if they don't stop Hayden Martin, they're not going to even be within two scores. Uh, so they have to stop Martin if they want to win this game, and they can't make mistakes. They need to play clean ball, they need to take care of the football, and they need to try their best to keep that turnover margin. Zach, what can we expect from here? All right, we're talking about Marion versus Ben here. Let's paint the picture, all right? Marion is number three in the 6A East Conference. Ben is number one. Ben's coming in with an 8-1 record, okay? 6-0 in conference play. Their one loss, you might ask? Brian. All right, pardon me. Yes, Brian. First game of the season. Guess the score to that game? We know Brian's a tough team. 52-42, to okay? They put up 42 points on this Bryant team. That is nothing to hang your head about. But this isn't some rinky-dink Marion team, okay? They're third in the conference. Last week, I'm going to paint another picture at you. They lost 23-14 to to Catholic, right? This Benton team beat Catholic 42-0. to So on paper, all right, this is looking like Benton's going to take this conference championship pretty easily. But not so fast, my friends. This Marion team is crappy. Okay, they're a, they're a devious offense. They like to run a lot of sweeps. They like to run a lot of jet passes. They like to run a lot of motion. They're gonna trick you in the motion, but not to mention, they're gonna control the time of possession. This is a run heavy offense. They've been good in the trenches this year, and this is gonna be a struggle for Benton. Benton, however, has also been very good in the trenches. This is, they have dominated opponents, averaging 10 plus yards per carry. Okay, this is a high quality, sustainable offense that as Mason and Joe and I like, they like to run the ball. Yeah. And ball. this team's going to get after it. Uh, this Benton defense, though, uh, they're not the strongest. It's not the best defense we've seen. All right. Obviously, they're, they're averaging about 20 points per game allowed, which is nothing to sneeze over. But it, it's, it's not their strong one. <laughs> um, for this Marion defense, they're very turnover reliant. Okay, this Benton team sustains easy drives on the ground, which is going to be difficult for this Marion team to keep up with, considering that the Benton team is ground and pound and they are big on ball security, such as Coach Harbison. Um, this, is, this is going to be a good game. It'll be a close game, 
on paper, it doesn't look like it's going to be the best of games, but I think Marion's going to play him close. I think Ben's the favorite, but it'll be a good game. Mason, what can you tell us about your game? Well, here's what I got. It's game of the week. There's yeah. no doubt about it. We got the Goliath against the Goliath, the top two in the Central. There's no doubt about it. 7A, they are studs. They're both undefeated. It's going to be athletes on athletes, a lot of action. It's going to come down to that last possession of the game. It's going to be back and forth, back and forth. I think whoever can get that final big stop will win the game. Conway, they like to run the ball. Big yardage come, like, come from their run place. They ran for a ton of yards last week. They had 515 yards of offense. How many of, how many of those yards were coming from the pass? 39. 39 passing yards out of a 500-yard offensive game. That is nothing <laughs> That's, to see. Yeah. That. that is something that uh, you will take hard-nosed football, ground and pound. But with this comes a struggle to convert on third down from time to time. If you get backed up, if you get stopped, well, you got to break a you know 10-plus yard run free. That can be difficult to do. But this Conway team, when you think of Conway, you think of running the ball. What do you think on the other side of the ball? think of just anchoring down. You think of anchoring down 107 points allowed all year. They're big, they're athletic, and they make a lot of plays. For Bryant, coming in, they were state champions last year. They're trying to get back to that point. They're first in the 7A Central point differential. Again, both undefeated. Every game that they have played, they've won by at least three possessions. It's going to come down to that final final drive. I'm telling you, this team, they like to run the ball as well, but they'll air it out a little bit more than Conway. It's, uh, they do the little things right. They don't turn the ball over. They don't have flags. Very disciplined team. They like to share the ball. They like to get everybody involved. That uh, backfield, it's like a carousel. Plug somebody in. Because of how athletic this team is, they don't have to rely on just one guy, one athlete. Hey, beat this guy. Don't he carries. No, 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 no. Myron Thrash Jr. last week, he had 30 yards a carry, two touchdowns in that game. How many carries did he have? He had two. He had two carries that day, game. They're keeping him, they're keeping the boys fresh over there. Defensively, again, it goes back to their head coach. They're very disciplined. They're a disciplined team. They're going to get off the field on third down. They've only let up 127 points this season as well. It's going to be defensive. It's going to be running the ball. Another big thing for Conway, though, however, they are missing their starting quarterback. But whenever you only throw for 39 yards in your past game, you have 500 yards, how big of an effect is that going to have? Not to mention, though, that this is a dual-threat QB in Conway. That yes, they're yeah, yes. But they're losing some of that run game, too. Because, you know. Yes, they are. And they are very athletic. It's going to be interesting to see how they handle that. Joe, what do you have? I have Little Rock Christian Academy on uh, at Pulaski Academy. This game is otherwise known as the Battle of the Academy or the Battle of the Private Schools here in Little Rock. Right in boys. Yeah, Little Rock's divided here on the private schools. These two are right here all day. They've met in the regular season and in the state championship three different times in the past three years with Pulaski winning two. And it would be like, no, Little Rock Christian wins one in the regular season. They meet again in the state championship. Pulaski wins the other one. Pulaski has the upper hand here. Uh, number 14, Little Rock Christian Academy is 6-3 and three on the year. And number 4, Pulaski is 7-2. Uh, they both had uh, lost to the Conway, 42-10 to 10 for Little Rock Christian and 32-12 for uh, Pulaski. These, these two have electric confidences. To start with Little Rock Christian, Kim Keller and Jackson Moore, he can win these three, you know, have run off. It's like a pro style. It's a set up the run, or a run, set up the pass all day long. Critical third downs, they're going to throw it up to Pete Green. That's their guy. That's the number of target. He, they know that if he puts the ball in the right place, he's going to go up and catch it. For Pulaski, Brandon Cobb. That's, ah, the, that's, that's the There he is. Cobb. He is the answer. He he runs this offense. It, he is the only reason that it is, a, it is a functional offense. This guy, 38 passing touchdowns on the year. Eight rushing touchdowns on the year. 400 total yards a game. 400, 330 passing yards a game. What are they doing? 70 rushing yards a game. This guy leads his own team in rushing yards, and he's the quarterback. <laughs> and he throws for 350 yards a game. That is unheard of. Are you kidding me? Like, 
that is actually ridiculous. This guy is literally their whole offense. And their number one thing is they also they also they don't like to get it inside. They like to get it outside and get it to their boys. They let the athletes go and then let them cook in the space, and then they go vertical. They go vertical, right? Right when you think there's some cushion, head top right over the top, head top. For the defenses here, Little Rock Christian, they love the blitz. They like to put pressure on the quarterback. Both defenses love to do this actually. I was seeing they they're very linebacker focused. They like to get their 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 playmakers out there and let the linebackers go make a play and get that tackle. Um, T.J. Williams for Little Rock Christian. I mentioned him earlier in the year. He is a big old boy. He leads this team in tackling. He oh, fills yeah. holes. Yeah, he like impacts the middle of the run game. But even with that, this team struggles time and time again against the rushing or the run. The 180 yards rushing a game against this team. Pulaski, on the other hand, they also love the blitz. They're averaging 3.8 sacks a game. Ooh, ooh. Uh, they love they love get the linebackers going, get them in space, make go go make a play. And shout out to outside linebacker Jackson Pat or Jackson Redmond with 11 sacks on the year, leading that team out. This is going to be a hard and gritty game. The offenses are going to stay with each other, and I think it's going to be like a one possession. Whoever gets that stop is going to win this game, and it's playoff seating on the line. Let's go to Aaron Rodgers here. Let's do it. Let's, Let's take go to the Aaron Rotary Rogers. Cup, huh? That's what the fans pay to see, and that's what we're going to give them. It's a, it's a battle of old versus new. It's a coming of age here. we got Heritage versus Rodgers. It's at Heritage, and Heritage has been a bit on the struggle bus this year. Yeah. They've been they've been struggling. Uh, Court? Yeah. The, the first thing that I can say is, obviously, Rodgers is coming off a 70-point game against Harper last week, right? They put up a big offensive performance. Pairing that against Heritage, giving up 39 points this season. I believe nine games in, they've given up 339 points. That is not going to be good for the Heritage War Eagles over there on the other side of town. They can't really stop the run too well, um, and their pass defense is a little bit sketchy sometimes. Um, so I think that is going to be a big advantage for Rodgers, and that needs to be a pressure point that they push on often throughout this game. You said that they've given up 339 points in. What I'm about to do is a little unfair. I'm going to compare the top to the bottom. Let's talk about Conway, and they've only given up 107. So they would have to play triple the amount of games <laughs> to give up that amount of points. It, it's, it's a, it shows the struggle for Heritage, but also it highlights Conway and, in the same sense. And, and part of that struggle, um, it's not just the defensive side of the ball. This team is averaging 13 points a game in 48 minutes of football. I mean, it's... It's just, it's a struggle on the offensive end. They've had, their quarterback isn't nothing to smile at, okay? Uh, the offensive line just isn't, it's just not getting the push up front that they need, and this is going to be a real struggle going into a strong Rodgers defense. Yeah, you know, we've talked about the struggles of Heritage, but let's highlight a little bit of good about Rodgers. You know, obviously, you say that with Jeffrey, you know, he's the most athletic person on almost any field he steps on him. He's a great ball player. He's got his weapons in Braxton and St. Tracy Expect them to be explosive against this defense here at Heritage. Uh, on top of that, expect them to run the ball well. The uh, defensive line for Heritage is a little bit undersized, um, so I would expect Jack Harrell and Cam and whoever else may get in that backfield. Sure. Uh, you talk about bringing up the highlights, and believe it or not, fellas, it's not all bad for Heritage on the offensive side of the ball. They can hand the ball off, and if they do, it's going to be right up the gun. It's going to be in between the guards. The guards are the best thing that they have going for them. And that's, that's how they're going to have their best chance at scoring, but Nesto might have something else in mind. You know, and we recently got probably their best player, Christian Flores, uh, transferred to Rodgers, uh, our safety now. He's had a great season. I did interception last week, too. Interception last week. Um, and talking about our safeties, uh, they'll pass out of any formation. Uh, this Heritage offense likes to switch it up a little bit. They're not all run between the guards. They like to try and air it out. It may not be the best passing game, but it's still a different play. talked about this heritage offensive line being big. I want to send a special highlight out to this Rogers offensive line. Yeah. They have played extremely yes. well this year. And like I said, with that undersized heritage defensive line, I think that our offensive line is going to be a big factor in this game. I think as long as they've played like they know how to, like they're comfortable playing, like they've played all year, I think they're going to be a great push towards this offense for Rogers tonight. And another thing to kind of go off that is we have played 
a very hard schedule. We have played right. some serious talent with Bentonville, Fayetteville, to start the season. Muskogee, that right. looked like a college caliber defensive line size-wise. They were huge. They are, mention, that's the, probably one of the best quarterbacks we've seen all year. <laughs> yeah, not yeah best, start the season like that. But what I'm saying is, is this offensive line has gotten better each game, each week, and they've played up to competition. They, they have. They've played well. They've constantly improved. I'm really proud of them. You know who else I'm proud of? Coach Bo Wright. He gave it his he gave it his all this week. We're gonna cut away to kicking it with cord. One thing. I, I genuinely think this is our best show of the week. So best I'm kicking it in a cord. I'm kicking it with cord. So far this year, I think it's our best one. So you guys will have to tune in to tell me what you think, but I think it's the best one so I think it's your best one. We'll just have to see. We'll be back. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of High School Game Day. Uh, it's a little different. We don't have the checkout here, and we also don't have a tea stand. Uh, it's the busiest day of the year. We got club photos today. Shout out to Miss Cassidy for making everything roll. Pretty chaotic day around here, but let's meet our contestant. We got Teacher Edition here today on High School Game Day. Uh, what is your name, and what do you teach here at RHS? Yeah, name is Coach Boatwright. Teach uh, U.S. history and uh, a little bit of economics. Okay, he was actually my economics teacher last year. Me and Brooks Burleson. Shout out to Brooks. Did you get an A in that class? I did get an A in that class. You bet. Best teacher out there. Uh, Coach Bo, what do you like to do for fun? You know, what activities? Yeah, so uh, my wife and I have an 18-month-old. Uh, his name's Hayes, and uh, he's he's great. So I try to go home, hang out with him, uh, and then anything outside, you know, hike, fish, camp, anything like that. Okay, that's pretty sweet. Young family over here. And uh, Coach Boat, how long have you been in RHS and how long have you been teaching in general? Yeah, uh, so I've been teaching eight years total and then this is my sixth year at RHS. Okay, I gotcha. Do you have any kicking experience whatsoever? Childhood, recent, anything? Uh, I punted in high school and that was about it. Okay, we got a punter. So a little bit of a kicker on our hands. No. Nope. No? Totally different. Okay, well you still got some experience. At least it's better than nothing. What is your confidence level then based off that? Is it like one out of ten? One out of ten. Who can we do negatives? We cannot do negatives. Mm, we'll let's go with a solid two and a half. Two and a half. Lowest confidence we've seen, even out of Colin. Colin had higher confidence than that. Yep. Um, all right. You know all the rules of this? Uh, kick it through the pearly white gates. There you go. All right right there. All right, let's do it. Like I said, we do not have our tea holder today, so I am the temporary replacement. You ready, coach? Boom, perfectly through uprights. All right, come back over here, come back over here. So you made it from the 10-yard line. Yep. You think we're gonna do double or nothing or are we taking the $20? No, we can do double or nothing. Okay, he's going for it all. Let's see how he does. All right, Coach Boat, you're only the third person to ever make a field goal at all. Let's see if you can become the second to do the double or nothing. You ready for it? Let's do it. All right, let's do it. Oh my goodness. All right, Coach Boat, Coach Boat. Come on, come on, come on. All right, he's giving us a silent treatment. Oh, oh, he's grabbing a prop. Okay, okay. He's coming in hot. What'd you say? We got triple or nothing on this thing. Joe, Joe, do we have triple or nothing on this thing? A little turtle power? It's teacher edition. Why not? Triple or nothing. Let's do it. Let's do it. have enough leg on it. All right. So, you know, typically we don't do triple or nothing, but it's teacher edition. Let's have a little fun. Just a casual little 40-yarder for Coach Boat. How do we feel? Uh, legs are a little tight. I appreciate Joe doing the sympathetic stretch behind the camera right now. Um, hopefully this uh, turtle backpack, shout out to a Journey. Is it Journey? Yeah, Journeys. Journey, we need another sponsor here at RHS TV. Um, yeah, so hopefully we can channel our inner Raphael and uh, get this thing through. All right, we got Raphael lining up 40 yarder. Let's see it. All right, coach, coach, backpack, me off. come talk to us. So you went for $60 or yeah. nothing yeah, and you fine. missed it. What, what are the thought here? Well, Raphael let me down. That's probably should have chose another freaking Ninja Turtle. Freaking so out. is that the backpack's fault or is that your legs fault? Um, well, my legs did just fine for the first two. 
and then I put the backpack on. So, you know. All right. I, I don't want to speculate, but. All right. Well, it was a great show. We appreciate you for coming out. You did fantastic. Um, that's going to do it for today. But, again, thank you so much for coming out. Any last thoughts? Uh, this is going on before the game Friday. Yeah. Go Mounties. Beat Heritage. All righty. Back to you guys at the desk. Welcome back, I'm kicking it with Gord. Like I said, my favorite episode so far this year, the most electric episode of my opinion. He tried tripling up, and it wasn't even on the script, Joe. I had to ask you behind the camera some special powers. Uh, yeah, he tried three deep. Out, yeah, he tried to bring out his inner Raphael. Uh, apparently, he should have brought out Leonardo. It wasn't quite enough. Mm -hmm. But Joe, you want to get started with Bowden today? What do you got today? No, another. The Brandon Cobb. There he oh, is. There he's there. This guy is going to show up in this game like he has all year, and I expect nothing less. Joe, that's his second time on Bowden. I mean, only two time person. I don't know why he's not dog of the day ever. I mean, this, kid, this kid's unbelievable. 400 total yards a game. He's one human. How does that happen? <laughs> <laughs> is he the way you're describing him as a superpower? Wow. He might be. Yeah, he was a how, how are defenses just letting him do this? How do how you let one person do this? <laughs> this, is, this is insanity. Mason, who's your dog of the day? My dog of the day is Dr. Jeff Perry because he has to, he has to root on both teams, and I think I think that's hard to do. I think he's facing a lot of back and forth right now, so what he's had to go through, uh, being there, showing up, showing out, I'm going with him. Dr. Jeff Perry's my dog of the day. Um, a semi-wise man named Kanye West uh, one time made us be careful. <laughs> made a song called Homecoming, and that is what it will be tonight for Christian Flores. Uh, he's coming home to Heritage. He's going to be, be a heat-seeking missile on this defense. He's going to come down. He's going to lay the boomstick. Boom, 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 boom. Five out of five on the boom meter. Um, and it's going to be a great day for Christian Flores. Expect to make more. What do you got? All right. I don't know if I mentioned this last week, but the big reason that I picked Lake, Ham Lake Hamilton over Shiloh is because of that running back, David Martin. Uh, he's going to be my dog today. Like I said, 20 total touchdowns. Um, I forgot to mention this earlier, but this offense only has 41 total touchdowns this year in history. So that's pretty crazy. That is insane. Uh, so he's going to be my dog today. He is, he is the, the guy on top of this offense. He's my dog today. Our dogs are a couple of one-man wrecking crew. But yeah, two-man. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look at him. Look at everything he's doing. Fantastic. But two-man wrecking crew. We got Coach Taylor and Coach Pender. Senior Citizen oh, Edition. They joined. Can you handle the pressure this week with Zach Lawing? We're going to cut away to that, and they are going to prove that teachers can appreciate a good tone just as much as the next guy. When we get back, Coach Hookfit. Can you handle the pressure? Welcome back to this segment. Thank you, Handles. Today, we have two coaches competing, and we will be throwing at four different targets. If they hit the first target, free cone. Second target, free pint. Third target, $25 gift card. Fourth target, free handle scoops for a whole year. Best scoops in town. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? What's your name? Coach Pender. Okay, Coach Pender, what's your name? Coach Taylor. Okay, so we would like, this is breaking news. Because we have two old heads here, two coaches, we're going to be doing teacher time. A minute and 30 seconds this week for these coaches. Wow, I know. Okay, let's get on into it. Uh, do you have any throwing experience? Uh, you could say I've thrown a baseball a time or two. Uh, college baseball player at Rockhurst, perhaps? That would be correct. Okay, what about you? Yeah, I, uh, I throw a lot of baseballs. I throw batting practice a lot for the baseball team. Okay, how would you consider your batting practice? I think I throw the baseball straight. Um, I can miss barrels if I need to, but uh, usually they hit it pretty hard off of me. Okay, okay. Uh, have you ever been a little disappointed in a quarterback? Maybe maybe just not very happy? Yeah, I've been watching the Patriots the last couple of years, so Mac Jones, Bailey Zappi, Jacoby Brissett, been very disappointed in them. Okay, what about you? Yeah, I get disappointed with quarterbacks. Uh, my fantasy football team's not doing real well because of my <laughs> quarterback play, and uh, so we need to improve that. I tend to say a lot, but uh, I watch a lot of games. What about Dak Prescott? I know you're a Cowboys guy. Uh, Dak's killing me. He killed me last week, but, uh, you know, we got to coach him better. That's just what it buckles down to. Our fantasy football team, I'm a three-time champ in the league, pay dirt, <laughs> okay. and I've been runner-up a couple times. I just got to coach him better. That's what it buckles down to. Yeah, maybe maybe send him a DM. Uh, coach Pender, how do you feel going into today? Uh, I feel all right. If I were to rate it, I'd probably give it a five out of ten. Five out of ten. You were hitting that 25, decently consistent in warm-ups. 
Yeah, I just gotta show under the lights here. Okay, yeah, pressure makes diamonds. All right, what about you? I'm feeling pretty good. I feel like a little bit above a five. I'm gonna go 5.5 out of 10, Coach Pender, and uh, just see what we can do. Obviously, the 25 is gonna be tough. Uh, hopefully, the five and the 15, you know, both of us can hopefully hit that, but we'll see. All right, let's get on to it. And we're done. Okay, after that performance, how are we feeling, Coach Pender? I uh, felt all right. Don't think it was my best performance, but still happy to get a free pint. Yeah, free pint. You know, speaking of that, you guys are not walking away empty-handed. Right. You will begin a free pint and a free cone, and you as well. Both hit the 10, the 15, and the 5. How are you feeling? I was a little disappointed with my early action. Um, I nailed the 15-yarder uh, pretty quick, but uh, kind of is what it is. I, I got close. I felt like if I could get to that last stage, then I would have put a real good show on, but kind of is what it is. Didn't I'm, give the fans what they want. Didn't give the fans nope. what they want. During teacher time, I heard a little huffing and puffing. How long is – have we been working out? I mean, you look – you're in shape, but we. I heard a little stamina was – the stamina was low. Did you hear Coach Pender? Yeah, I heard you too. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm at the RHS gym Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so that's kind of embarrassing on my part. <laughs> okay. And, you know, I gave it my best effort. If you heard a little huffing and puffing, I probably did a little bit too. Okay, so the BP didn't shine through uh, during that round. You didn't make the 25. How do you feel? I mean... Yeah, disappointed about the 25. Um, you can probably comment a little bit more on my batting practice. What do you think? I mean... I mean, the cutters that you throw in batting practice tend to miss some barrels, I'd say, and the, yeah. and the leg lifts that are a little off timing, but, you know. Yeah, I'm not Coach Bunch. Uh, shout out to Coach Bunch, our chess baseball coach as well. But, hey, we do our best. Has your opinion on quarterbacks changed at all? Do you feel any worse about uh, maybe diminishing them as they play? No, I mean, big guys, 6'5 guys with hands that they can move, I feel a lot better about being able to throw a ball to them. Okay, you? Yeah, my opinion hasn't changed even in the slightest. If anything, I think I have a chance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, guys. We're going to head back. Coach Pender and Coach Taylor couldn't get it done, even with senior citizen time, but now we're moving on to a new senior citizen, okay? We have <laughs> <laughs> here. <laughs> Coach Hookman here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You have a past history of playing football? Yeah, you? I, I played football in the MAC at Ohio University. Yep. Not the kind of guy I'd want to call a senior citizen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Not yet, but getting there. Yeah. Well, oh, thank you. Yeah. Just messing around, of course. You, uh, you, you did play in the NFL, though. You're, you're staying a little humble here. Well, I did. I don't want to overstate my time. I practice a lot for the most part, but it was fun. And I, and I was there. People don't even know that. I just try to keep it honest. You know, we're Googling you all this on stuff. You played on the Falcons. <laughs> yeah. You played on the Falcons. I did. Yeah. You uh, said you met Ray Lewis at Gap. I got tapped with Bob Ray Lewis. Pretty cool. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. On the other side, it was cool, but I got tapped with another great experience. I really enjoyed it. All right. Yeah. Fantastic. We are going to go ahead and get into our next segment. It's called Pick'em and Stick'em. So we're going to go around and we are going to select 
what team, what game we think will win. That sound all right? Absolutely. Okay, sounds good. Core, kick it off. Yeah, uh, so we're kicking it off with my game. Uh, we got Russellville at Lake Hamilton. Like I said, 3v5 game here. Uh, big playoff implications in this game. But I got to stick with my dog today. I got to stick with my guns. I'm taking Lake Hamilton at home. They're coming off with a big win. Um, I think they might have a little bit of a, a little bit of a high come out of the game. But I do still think that they'll get it done. And it's trust to uh, keep the three seed going in their playoffs. Uh, to carry on, I think Lake Hamilton's been really hot lately. Uh, I think they've been playing good football. And it's the kind of football that I like. I'm going to take Lake Hamilton this game. Played against Lake Hamilton. Used to be in my conference back in the day. Triple A Southwest. Hey. Tough place to play. I'm going Lake Hamilton. Lake Hamilton. Okay, I'm, I'm going the opposite side of the spectrum. I think it's rivalry week. I think these teams are going to come out ready to play. I'm taking the Cyclones to come in there and blow a little bit of wind around them. Give me the Russellville Cyclones in this one. I know, I'll hop right back in the Wolf Pack here. It's going to be Lake Hamilton. Uh, you know, they, they beat Trilo last week. Did not see that one coming. I kind of glitched out a little bit. Didn't really expect it. Can't, can't go against them now. Yeah, yeah. Can't back down now, so it is a 4-1 to one Lake Hamilton showing there. Moving right. on to the next game, we have Benton versus Marion. Zach, you covered that one. What do you think? Uh, I think during this game, it's just, I think it's Benton's game to win. Uh, I think they're going to come out, they're going to have that sustainable offense, they're going to bring the boom with the rush. Give me Benton on this game. Yeah, um, I'm on the same page. I think Benton's just a better team here. I just think they're going to get done. I'm going to keep it short and simple as that. I think they're better. Yeah, same here. Let's go Benton. Yeah, I think it's easy to sit here and look, okay, on paper, numbers this, numbers that. Yeah, nice. come on. Who's rooting for the little guy, huh? <laughs> Give me Marion in this one. Uh, not me. I, okay, I okay. The little yeah, guy here. Uh, <laughs> is uh, the better team here, and I don't think she'll be pretty good. Okay. Oh, oh one spoiler. Uh, the underdog one. Yeah, one yeah. Hey. reference there to the Pinnacle game. Hopefully, it's a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, hopefully Marion comes barking. Yeah. The only thing you have going for you. <laughs> This is getting beautiful. All right, Little wow. Rock Christian versus Moving Pulaski on. Academy. <laughs> Moving on, Little Rock Christian versus Pulaski Academy. I'm going to go ahead and take uh, Little Rock Christian. Just trying to keep this thing rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the Warriors. Oh, uh, I did this game and I, I got Pulaski here. I think it's going to be very close. This rivalry has been going on for a few years, uh, but I think Brandon Cobb is going to win this off. Yeah, um, I covered Pulaski earlier this season. Um, I just got this time. I'm going to say Brandon Cobb is my dog of the day. I think he's three, um, episode three for us. Um, I think that he is a quarterback that is going to win this game for them. Um, I do think this whole Rock Christian team is very talented. I think they're going to make it a close game. Um, big seed in terms of from both sides. But I am going to take Pulaski at the end of it. Uh, I'm going to button up this one and don't get oh, up. Get all oh, okay. and personal. Get professional. I'm your biggest fan, Brandon. I'm your biggest <laughs> fan. Uh, I love you. Um, once again, I would also like an autograph uh, for one day. Give me Pulaski Academy. <laughs> Thank you. He's actually just collecting all the autographs. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think it's going to be a close game. But at the end of the day, I think um, the Rock Christian is going to make one more play. Push them over. Thank you. For the double. Finally. Right. I'm, I'm not on an island anymore. Yeah. It's three to two. <laughs> Pulaski is still taking it, but a little bit more of a split there. Yeah, a little, little more even. Taking it. So uh, we're going to move on to the game of the week. Little, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Conway versus Bryant. Game of the week. Debatable. It's, yeah. it's going gonna, it's gonna to come down to the wire, yeah. most definitely. And when you take a look at this game, you're, you're thinking of Jimmy's and Joe's, not necessarily X's and O's. These guys know how to get it done. They're athletes on both sides of the ball. And Conway's missing one. They are missing their starting quarterback. But when you can run the ball for 400 and 40 yards in one game. That has got me sold. Give me Conway. Yeah. Um, on another note, um, that quarterback, I think, I think losing the quarterback will be very, very detrimental to this offense. And I don't blame. I think it's safe. And I think it's easy Brian, to go. Hey, Brian has looked unbeatable Man. all this year. And I, you know, I thought Conway was going to be that team that's like, this is going to be the greatest game. You know, but then they lose their quarterback. Well, now I have to go Brian. I see where you're coming from. I do. For me, coming into this pick, I think this is as well-rounded of a game as you can put together in high school football. And I think both of these teams play so quality. We talk at baseball about playing the game the right way, and both of these teams play the game so well. I'm going to take Bryant this game. Uh, 
with their offense and how well they've been able to control teams on defense. Um, I was going to take Conway going into this game, but I'm going to take Brian with the quarterback loss situation, um, but expect one of the best games of the season. Yeah, when we, uh, when we first talked about this game, uh, coming into it at the beginning of this week, uh, I really thought that's going to blow out Brian was going to win. Well, like, you know, Conway's quarterback's out. You know, it's going to kill the team moral. I mean, you're starting quarterback. The more I've thought about this game, the more I've looked into it. That running game, like you said, makes for Conway, it's unreal. They got that carousel in the back. Field. Three, four guys will get touches. I think that's going to keep in this game. I am going to still take Brian, but I do really, genuinely think this is going to be a one-score game, close game, uh, and honestly, really exciting and like, down there in the Central. I agree. I think it's going to be a very close game. I think it's going to have the best to with the guys that are playing and the coach that's on the sideline mm -hmm. Conway. I think Brian's going to have a little bit more extra motivation for this game. Okay. Well, homecoming. Nice. Mason's back on the island. Yeah, yeah. Yep. It's it's just me, but we'll see what happens. How's the weather? The weather? Yeah. On the island? Yeah. We're just gonna have to see you tonight. I don't know. Mason wanted to be different today. Court. That's that's why he uh, wore overalls and didn't tell me in court. I am upset about that for the viewers at home. Thank you. So, I didn't know that he had overalls because he's never worn them. We're gonna move on, and Zach's gonna get over himself. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the Rotary Cup, we have Rogers versus Heritage. Woo! Coming into this one, it's a crosstown rivalry, and I think everybody and their mother is expecting a blowout, including Marcus Mounts. <laughs> I think Marcus Mounts is going to lead the charge. He's going to get a win for the Mounties. This thing is about to fall off. So I'm just going to kind of hold it for a couple of seconds for dramatic effect. Can we cover that for the, yeah. the Marcus Mounts? We're going to get to Marcus. Mounts. He's got me picked up. So let's see if we can make this any sort of practical. <laughs> to, to add on to Marcus Mounts being right. the face here, Fantastic. when we last played Hi, Heritage, Marcus. when we last played Heritage at their place, Marcus Mounts left that field as the newcomer of the year with three interceptions in that game and 17 tackles. That is unheard of. Marcus Mounts, the eighth wonder of the world. Eighth wonder of the that world. Is the world. They call that is. I'll, I'll carry it on. The Rogers Mounties, <laughs> in general, <laughs> are going to have a night tonight. Uh, the Rogers Mounties are going to have a great game tonight. I think their scheme matches well uh, to dominate this Heritage team, even though it's a cross-town rivalry game. I'm excited for the country student section theme. Go Mounties! Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, to go off of that, uh, you know, numbers don't lie. Uh, Marcus over there is kind of haunting us, but... Numbers don't lie. When you line up 339 points over nine games, uh, it's not a recipe for success, quite frankly. Uh, it's over 40 points per game. Uh, quite when, fast, when you, quite frankly. When, uh, when you compare that with the Rogers team that just came off a 70-point win, and they have really could run up the score on a lot of teams, including even on Bayer, even in a loss, but up 30-plus. Uh, they can really score against good teams. Um, and I think that they will get it done by uh, quite a few possessions. Not going to say how many, but quite By many. murder. Perhaps. Now, Coach Hookfin, we call you coach for a reason. And you coached at Heritage High School. Hey, uh, I wonder what Joe's thoughts are. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, like I was going to say, to be continued, they call you yeah. coach for a reason. Yeah. 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 yeah they do. I mean, it's because he looks dang good in those overalls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was about to say that. Uh, <laughs> the overalls. Hey, Mountie. I'm not yeah. jealous at all. Mountie Rushmore. These boys are coming. Rivalry week. They're mad. 70 point game against a team that scores 13 points a game. It, it's about to be a. I'm excited to see season that almost a super season. Oh, yeah. Closer every day. Mike Mace was saying, put it in perspective for y'all. Coach, you coached three years in there. I right? did. Yes, sir. Three years over there in Heritage. It's a little bit of an emotional victory. You know, you got some, some blood in the water. Yeah, so um, my class, a lot of those guys are just here. So, but nonetheless, I think it's going to be maybe a little closer to the back. If I'm at Heritage, this is a game that you kind of circle. You can't win anything. You have lots of success. What better way to end your season than a winner of your front right. yard? Um, I do think it's going to be a little closer to the back. I think it's going to be a little closer to the extra motivation. Um, because if they're able to beat Rodgers, that may mess up our team a little bit more than the playoff time for what our last year ever did. Right? Um, but nonetheless, what I got in here. Oh, you're missing it. Oh, glasses are coming off. Mm. What is 
was that mean? What was that? Mean? It said off. Oh. oh. But when it's all said and done, I just don't think they'll have enough. Uh oh, baby. Uh oh, sis for ya. I'll let you finish the job. Oh, baby. Here we go, right here. Let's go, right here. Wow. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. That is going to conclude this episode of High School Game Day. Thank you for tuning in, Coach Hookfin. I don't know if you can see my hand, I'll just find you. Thank you for joining us. That's going to conclude it. Thank you.